plans for the future of Stroke Live? I think for me, the music course itself, I want to make it as close to real life as possible so that whether you go on to university or straight into the industry, you are fully equipped with all of the skills that you need to make money, to make a career out of it. And, and also um, I want to encourage my students to be creative and it's great to learn other people's songs, that's a good vehicle, um, but I think for me it's about producing original material um, and, and trying to get as much work out there as possible and to encourage that. So I try to make it as real as possible and I, I would like to in 10 years time be able to sit on you know, a history of maybe hundreds or at least tens of students that have gone out into the industry and actually made it. Um, that's really what I hope for, for my future looking back on my career as a teacher that I've actually inspired students to really actually you know, make, make a really good career out of it. Um, what are your future plans with the bands? So this is the first year that we've run Battle of the Bands, which is really exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking. Um, it's been great to get some good, great names on board as well, um, such as Michael Levis and also Stephanie Newen Hayes from BBC Introducing um, and James Wilmont from uh, Muddy Road Studio. Um, so I kind of hope that it stays along those sort of lines really going forward to encourage students to come together and to create 20 minutes of original music um, with a hope that that going well, they have now a product which they can use to, to perform at festivals and events of their own original music, to get logged on with PRS and PPL and the Musicians Union and start to make money out of their own work. Um, and for me that's really where I see a future for musicians going forward is through live performances um, of their uh, original material. Um, so my hope is that going forward year on year this builds and builds and builds. Um, obviously we've got a capacity of 337-ish so there will be a, a, a an amount where we reach capacity but it's my hope that we can um, really develop a, a litany of wonderful musicians from this experience going forward. What made you become a teacher in the first place? Um, I think, I don't know if it's the same for everybody that's a teacher but I think you find yourself in other roles trying to strive towards teaching anyway. So I worked in uh, for a window glazing telephone company um, and I always really enjoyed the sort of training side of it and again when I worked in the bank it was exactly the same I really enjoyed training other staff and I realized that that's what I like doing is helping people to gain knowledge and gain experience and skills um, I wasn't happy in the bank and I wasn't happy working as a telephone canvassing manager either in my young career so I decided that it'd be a good idea to retrain um, and why not retrain and teach in the thing that you absolutely love at the time I was in, in my weekends was all about gigging um, I think the first year of university I did over 100 gigs in a year so it was you know really my passion and I use that to get through university and yeah so for me teaching is something I've always wanted to do I like inspiring people to be the, their best selves. Um, what is the best gig you've ever done? I don't know how you would compartmentalise that. I think I've done some really cool, cool gigs with lots and lots of people. We did one at the walkabout in Plymouth. Um, it's like 800, 900 people in this quite, you know, relatively small space. It was just packed um, and that was really, really fun. But my favourite gig was probably my first gig after college and I was only 18. It was literally my first gig. I just bought my PA system and I got it by working six weeks as a builder's mate, sort of just packing rubbish into skips and I earned just enough money to pay for my first PA system and I went out and I did my first gig and I got paid 150 quid for it but everybody turned up um, and it was all original music and, and people were just so welcoming and lovely and really listened, it was silent and um, I got to play my own music and people were just so lovely to me about it and I got paid for it and it was just an amazing experience for me because I thought hang on a minute you really can make a lot of money out of this and it was just so, although maybe the crowd for that one was only 20-30 people, it was a small space and I, I think that was still my best gig, 10-15 years ago now. But, yeah. um, what made you choose straight? I think um, I, I want to be a teacher anyway. I mean, for me, the 16 to 18 is a, is a really important time for development and growth. It was for me. I wasn't an amazing student at school, but when I got to college, I realised what I wanted to do, and I worked, started to work really, really hard. And so I saw a huge transformation in myself between the ages of 16 and 18, which is why I want to work with 16 to 18 year olds, because um, it's sort of a make or break time, I think. Um, and I'd, I wanted to be and enjoy being a part of that with the uh, development. Um, so working with that age group is really important and the two closest colleges to where I live are um, where I work and here uh, at Strode College. Um, so yeah.